Hello, good afternoon, good afternoon. Um, good morning, good afternoon, good afternoon, and then good evening. Um, good afternoon, Joseph. Can you hear me clearly? Hello. Please, if you can hear me, can you please signify? Can hear you clearly. I couldn't hear you well. Can you hear me? Uh, yeah, I can hear you. I can hear you clearly. Just uh, thank you very much. Um, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's section of Analytics Copas Workshop 3.0. And today we'll be diving into introduction to Power by and our facilitator is already around, as you can see. Our facilitator, facilitator for today is Joseph Faderu. Um, a brief introduction. Um, um, before I introduce our facilitator, the ground rules still remain the same. We should always try to be punctual for the sections. Um, we should have an open mind towards the section and we should all make in one class. Um, participation is very key. That is one thing that actually makes this um, section very important. We, have, we should all try to participate and we should learn to respect one another, irrespective of ethnicity, religion, or anything. And one very, one very paramount thing is we should always try to meet our mics whenever we join the, the call. So moving further, our first for today, you know, Joseph Adero is a team lead BI analyst, He's a business intelligence analyst and a trainer who specializes in providing maximum value from business data and automating repetitive process through the aid of the Power Platform. He facilitates data analytics training with Excel, Power BI, and productivity courses. Skilled in building business solutions with Power Platform applications and training on Power Query and analysts with Power BI, Power BI, DAX, and the rest. He delivers voluntary service to the tech community where he has facilitated, facilitated and various programs meant to obscure youth in the country. Join me as a, as a welcome a facilitator for today with the person of Joseph Fadego. Um, Steph. Okay, uh, so can you hear me? Can everybody hear me? The network is... Should I say horrible? Horrible is the, is the right word to say, but can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you clearly, Joseph. Um, I guess the, the network issue on the end. Um, Joseph? I guess it is not on the call at the moment. Um, but can anybody hear me? Okay, um, thank you for that. Um, um Moses. I guess uh facilitator is having network issue, but let's just give him some time. He should be here anytime soon. Hello, sorry about that. Can you hear me now? 
Yeah, I can hear you very well, Joseph. Thank you. Thank you. I can hear you. Okay. Sorry, everyone. Um, I so guess... just a quick one. I want to try to okay. find it. Can you hear me? So just a quick one. Okay. We will start shortly um, before 16. I just want to find a solution to this network issue. So please bear with me. All right. Shall All right, no problem. Thank you. All right. Yeah, you can so pen... please engage the audience. Okay. Okay, thank you, Joseph is back online. Um, does anybody have one or two things he or she wants to say? You should raise their hand. And how has the how has the program been? Like, what have you learned so far? Has it been impactful? Has it helped in any way? What are the things you were looking up to? And what are your expectations? And what have you seen? What is so? Um, okay, um, Christiana, um, I'll be giving you the mic and yeah, what do you have to say? Um, Christiana, you can omit and speak, Christiana, you can omit and speak. I guess Christiana is one of that there. Um, Okay, Moses, please omit your mic and speak. Hello, what do you hear me? Hello, Moses, hear me? You can omit your mic and speak, Moses. I've omit, I've omitted me just for him to, it's for him to omit his end. So that's what I'm waiting for. Anybody else has something to say? Yeah, I could see Kelvin saying the network is horrible. Yeah, it's absolutely everywhere. So it's not only from your end. Um, I've omitted you, Moses. You can omit from your end and speak. Okay, can you hear me now? Is my network yeah, better? Can. can you hear me clearly now? Okay, yeah, Joseph, I can hear you clearly now. I think I can hear you clearly now. It's a bit better. Okay. Okay, so please, if the, if during the session you can't hear me, please drop it in the chat. Network is horrible for a lot of us right now. I'm using three different network providers and I'm still having terrible network. So yeah, sorry for the slight delay. Um, just a quick quick thing about me. I'm Joseph Fadio. I'm your facilitator for today. Also part of the um, co-organizers with Adewale Yusuf and Olua Pelumi of this workshop. And what I am doing today is introducing us to Microsoft Power BI. Now, I'm just going to be laying the I'm just going to be laying the foundation for a lot of stuff you are going to be doing with Power BI. So please uh, pay attention, note some things down. So when the when you have other sessions with Power BI, a lot of things are easier for us to do. Now I hope everyone heard me clearly. If you heard me clearly, 
kindly give a reaction. Yes, um, Joseph, I can hear you clearly. So let's wait for the audience to see if they can actually hear you clearly from their end. Okay, okay. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, everyone. Sorry again for the delay. Now, before I begin begin today um, today's session, I want to confirm how many of us have Microsoft Power BI installed on our system. Aisha said she does. Um, Zako, Zadok said she has it installed. Alibola, um, Kelvin said he couldn't install it. Then Latinike said yes, she has it. Cynthia said she has it. Um, Adekule, if you have power installed on your system, can you please signify it by typing yes in the chat box? Okay, so I, I can see a lot of yes, 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 I do. Okay, okay, so thank you. Somebody asked a very, very delicate question. Uh, do we have to sign up for it? Do you have to sign up for it? Now, that get, that introduces me to the very first aspect of Power BI, which I'm going to be talking about. So Power BI as a, Power BI on its own, is it can be divided into two three core parts. You have the Power BI desktop. Power BI desktop is where you typically do the development work in your Power BI. You have the Power BI service, which is the cl cloud version of Power BI, which is now termed Microsoft Fabric. In the analytic copper workshop, we may be introduced to it towards the end of the program which is Microsoft Fabric. Then we have the Power BI Mobile, which is also a mobile version of Power BI, which you can consume reports on your screen. Now for Power BI Desktop, to use Power BI Desktop, you don't need to sign, you don't need to sign up for Power BI De Desktop. So Power BI Desktop, to use it, you can use it for free. And you can install Power BI Desktop on Microsoft Store. So for those who don't have it installed, you can go to Microsoft Store. You can search for Power BI. Power BI and under Power BI, you see Power BI Desktop. Now, for those using Windows PC, they, they, I said Windows Mac PC. So currently, as of now, uh, I don't know, they keep on releasing updates to Power BI as of now. Uh, Power BI is not Power BI desktop is not supported on Windows, unfortunately. But there are ways around it. Um, the ways around it, there are lots of YouTube videos on it. You may have to install a virtual machine, which is like a which is like a computer that allows your MacBook to act like a Windows PC. Now, if you are faced with that situation, I implore you, YouTube is your friend. You can go on YouTube. There are a lot of videos on how to install Power BI desktop on Win on Mac PC. But if you are using Windows PC, just open your Microsoft Store and search for Power BI desktop, and you will be able to install Power BI desktop. Now I know a lot of us have Power BI on our system. Now it's possible Power BI was already pre-installed on probably your device. You you have an office device, your Power BI was probably pre-installed on your Power BI. Now, the next question I want to ask, does your Power BI look the same way my Power BI look? I want us to open the Power BI on your system and does it look the same way my Power BI looks? Do you have, do you have this, do you have this, do you have this, do you have this? Uh, it's your, do you have something here on top of your Power BI? Is it the same way my Power BI look? Yes, I just... Okay, okay. So one thing is 
one thing about Power BI and Microsoft pro products in general is Microsoft releases updates to the products every month. A lot of the products every month, even Excel every month. So if so, if you want to be sure you are using the latest version of X, of Power BI, at the top icon, these top icons are your tabs or ribbons. Um, so you may hear other facilitators saying, oh, go to your mode tab, go to your insert, go to your view, go to your optimize. This is what they are talking about, this top icon. So I'll try to choose over around them, your home, your insert, your modeling, your view, to optimize your help. Now in your help tab, this is like the very first place I advise beginners when they are starting Power BI to go to. Your help tab, you can see about Power BI. On that about, you can see the version of Power BI you are using on your system. I can click on this about. Uh, so right here, it's telling me I'm using July 2024 version of Power BI. Now, if you are on July 2024, that is a very good thing. I, I implore us all to be on July 2024. The reason why I'm saying this is if you are not on July 2024, if you are not even on 2024, there are lots of features which you may not have on your Power BI because your Power BI is outdated. And this happens sometimes when you do not download Power BI from the Microsoft Store. So what you can do if your Power BI is not updated, you can go to the store. If you downloaded it from the store, you should see the update button on the from your end. You should see the update button if you downloaded your Power BI from the Microsoft Store. Instead of open, you should see update if your version is outdated. But if your version is new, you are using the latest version of Power BI, you will see it, it just tells you to open. Tells you to open. Now, the second thing you can find in this help place is guided learning. So guided learning on Power BI itself, Power BI has already provided resources on how you can probably learn Power BI as a beginner, as a beginner. And in under this guided learning, you can accomplish tasks. If I click on this link, I think it should take me to Microsoft Learn, uh, where I can learn about Power BI. I can browse learning parts about Power BI. So if I want to learn more about Power BI, I can browse it to this link. Uh, this link. And what I will do is after this session, I've created a plan which can which you can use to which can help you to learn Power BI effectively and easily. And it contains some of these materials as well. So under the guided learning, you have that. Then you have other training videos which you can see as well under this help tab on your Power BI. You have documentation. If you like reading a lot you can go to the documentation. It takes you to Microsoft Docs. Uh, Microsoft Docs is a site which you can learn about a lot of Microsoft products and services where you can read the actual documentation. And you have access to download the PDF. So you can download it. You don't have to be always online. But if you are lucky with internet, you can always read it online and get access to the latest resources. Then we have support. Now, support when you are facing a problem, a challenge with Power BI, you can reach out to this, reach out to the support. They will always try to help you with your issue. Now, Power BI blogs, I always employ us to keep up to date with Power BI blogs. Like I said, they release Power BI every month. Every month. They release updates to Power BI every month. So if you if I see right now the July 2024 feature summary, if I want to see what is the latest addition they've added to Power BI, I can click on this link and I can go to the link. Now the benefit of being updated into the tool and technology is technology changes every single day. They keep on improving technology. Me, I try to be ahead of the curve in the technology change so that I wouldn't be carrying outdated knowledge or resources. Now, previously before, Power BI 
in the older versions of Power BI, you only probably see three things. These three, report view, table view, model view. I'm sure some of us may not still see this dark square view. Some of us may not still see this dark square view. But under your views of Power BI, you may only see these three things. I'm going to explain them a bit. But they keep on releasing updates to Power BI, and you now have this addition to Power BI, something called dark square view. So if you are not up to date in Power BI, you'll be carrying outdated knowledge. So I always employ check this Power BI blog. Then the next thing is you can join the Power BI community. The Power BI community is a wonderful place. It's called Microsoft Fabric Community right now. So it's a wonderful place where you can share problems. You can answer problems that people are also having issues people are having you can offer solutions to problems that people are having and the beauty of it is that by answering questions on the community you get recognized by microsoft you get recognized by microsoft microsoft uh you have ranks in the community like in the power to make community for example you you have various rankings ranking system in the fabric communities you have ranks in the community and by doing community works, I know a lot of us will be wondering, oh, what is an MVP? You want to be an MVP. The easiest way to get an MVP is by contributing directly to these communities. But communities, if I check right now, if I go to this desktop, for example, I'll see people that probably have issues with Power BI desktop. Um, I have a problem with doing this, I have a problem with doing that. And if you can offer a solution, you can see this check button. They've marked it as a solution. And that contribution is saved to your name, is saved to your profile. And like I said, Microsoft recognizes some of these contributions as well. So I implore us, register for the community. Once you register for the community and try to be interactive in the community. Now, if something we've not yet talked about, we may probably have a user group, a user group in the community, which we're going to share with us, share with us as we progress as well. So that's that's communities. Then you have something called external tools. Now, apart from your typical Power BI tools, as a Power BI developer, you may be asked or you may be required to work with some external tools like Tabla Editor, uh, Dark Studio, you don't Dark Studio as well. So you can see some external tools you can bring in to Power BI directly from this help section. And one other place which I also like is examples. Now, if you are stuck on, oh, what should I build? For example, I need to know what type of date, what type of report should I build? I can come to community gallery. Let me see what other people have built before in Power BI. And I can come to community. So community gallery is, is not only it's not only just for Power BI, but there are a lot of uh it's also we also have for Microsoft Fabric other products as well. But under the community gallery, let me even check COVID-19 data story gallery. We can see a lot of visuals, a lot of reports people have built before on Power BI. So you, you can also post your work in the community galleries. You can post your various work, your various dashboard in the community galleries as well. So that's another place you can go. You can see the galleries for inspiration to design something nice. And let's see, I can click on this and I can view the reports created by this individual. On this gallery, on this gallery. So, so that is the help section of Power BI. A lot of people don't, even seasoned Power BI users, don't even explore this help section. But this help section is where I implore you. Once you are starting Power BI, explore all of these features under the help section. Now, once you've explored the guided learning and all other features, a lot of things start becoming easier for you to learn with Power BI. Now, under the tabs, I'm going to go back a bit and I'm going to start from the home tab. Now, the home tab 
this is where this is where you do a number of stuff in your Power BI. Before I go into your home tab, I mentioned these views before: report views, table views, model views, and dark query views. Uh, please confirm. Can everyone hear me? So, can anyone hear? Me? Can you hear me? Yes, I hear you. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. So before I go on too far, so right now, right now on my screen, I'm on the report view. Report view. This is where you build out your reports, your dashboard, your your visualization. I said dashboard. Now, when you get to Power BI service, it can be a little bit um, tricky. But by dashboard, I mean a snapshot of all your reports. But this under this your Report view. This is where you build out reports, visualization, and do your storytelling in your report view. Now you have your table view. Your table view is where the data you've loaded from your Power BI is brought into, where you can see the data you've loaded from your Power BI. This is under the table view. Now the model view, this is where you can create relationships with your data. Now you're going to talk about these things in more depth, but one beauty about it already is if you're coming from an Excel background, and that's why we were deliberate to let us learn Excel first, and we adequately introduced those videos that I introduced. If you're coming from an Excel background, Power BI essentially started from Excel. Power BI essentially started from Excel. Now, Power BI as a product started in the year 2015. That's when Microsoft released the Power BI product. But if we are being realistic, Power BI started becoming a thing when Microsoft introduced a tool called Power Pivot in Excel. I know most of us in our project, we probably did we probably use this tool, and I'm going to open Excel. We probably use this tool, Power Pivot in Excel. And what Power Pivot in Excel does is it allows us to create a data model. This is normally a relationship between two or more data together. When Microsoft also introduced Power Query in Excel. Now, Power Query in Excel, for those of us that probably did the project you are familiar with Excel. You have this get data act, get data action in Excel. What this does is it allows you to bring your data from various sources in Excel. Then you now have pivot tables in Excel. So if you have knowledge working with, if you have knowledge working with, let me see, can I draw? Uh, okay, and I can't draw on this. If you have knowledge working with those three tools, you have knowledge working with Power Query, Power Pivot, and working with pivot tables in Excel, Power BI is very, very simple for you to learn, for you to learn essentially. Now, the distinction is with Power BI, you can actually build a lot more visuals. You, you have a lot more visualization option and you can share your reports easily with Power BI service. With Power BI service, you can easily share your reports that you need to share to whoever, whenever they need it. And you can add some automations into your reports in a nice and easy way with Power BI. Those are the additional benefits with Power BI. Now, for you, for you starting with Power BI, like I said, if you are coming from an Excel background, and you've used Power Query in Excel, how Power BI works, unlike Excel where you probably type your data into the Excel sheet, in Power BI, you need to bring data into Power BI for Power BI to work if, if, um, efficiently. And how you can do that is by leveraging the get data. This works essentially how you get data from Excel is the same tools and technology. Power Query in Excel, you have Power Query in Power BI. Now, the only difference is with Power BI, you have, you have more sources, more 
places where you can bring in data from. You have lots of information where you can bring in data from. Now, the next session you're going to be having is going to explore Power Query in more depth, where you do a lot of ETL processes. But I'm here to welcome you to the welcome you to Power BI and a lot of tools and services with Power BI. You can get data from Excel. You can get data from a website. You can get data from SQL. You can get data from a lot of places, from your PDF, from a folder. Uh, you have a lot of sources listed here. And what, what happens is you can bring in your data from these sources and you can work with your data. Also, you can actually enter data into Power BI. Under this home tab, you have this enter data. So this option, when you click on create a table, you can directly enter data into Power BI. Now, I wouldn't always advise you to do this, but you what but a good use case scenario for this is if you need to create a DAX table. Now you would probably do this when you get into DAX, you get into some advanced concept. But what this does is you can enter information into Power BI. I can call this gender. Uh, gender, I can call this boy add plus girl. Call it C underscore table, and I can click on load, load data. I have two options load, edit. Edit takes me to Power Query. Uh, I'm just going to load the data directly into Power BI. And once I've done that into my Power BI, I have the data. I can come to my table view to see the load. The loaded data, let me up. Okay, still loading. Okay. Okay, so it has loaded. I can come to my table view to see the data I brought into my Power BI. Let me click on gender, so boy and girl. And if I come to my report view, what I need to do to create a simple report is by clicking on it the way you click in pivot tables, in pivot tables. Now this is showing under my data, under my data, and this is where I can bring in my visualization into play. Now I just showed that, that we can actually enter data into our Power BI. I'm not going to do that now. I'm going to delete that. I'm going to delete that. Now we have this. So we have the enter data feature. Under insert, under the insert tab, you can bring in some advanced visualization, like you have the key influencer, the composition tree. These are AI visuals. You can bring them into your Power BI, or you can bring in shapes. If you want to design your dashboard, your reports, you can bring in shapes. I can add a rectangle into my Power BI. I add it here and I can probably do a shape. So this can be my starting point for my Power BI reports. And this can be my title page. So you can bring in shapes to your Power BI. If I want to edit my Power BI background, my Power BI background, I can come to this format pane. So under this, you also have your data, your build, your format pane. I can click on this format pane. And under this format pane, the format pane is what has this button here. I can come to canvas background and I can change the color. The default color is white. I can change the color to probably, let's say I choose this color and I can set the transparency to reduce the transparency. So with this, I've changed the color of my report view. I've changed the color of my report view. So that's one thing you can do here. I can change the color back to white again. You have that. I have the option to add the X code. If I want to add the X code, I'll click on the color, more color, and I'll paste the X code. The X code is the code you get from the color. I can paste it there. Then under this canvas setting, I can even bring in an image, an image which will represent my background. I can bring that image in. So I can go here, 
let's say image let me see um i don't know what this is i'm just going to go with this i can bring that image in and i can set the transparency to light okay it's in my certificate i have it like this and that image is in my background of my picture so this is under the canvas setting this entire section of your power bi is your canvas like your as artists where you draw is called your canvas so that's the same meaning of this your canvas then you have on you have canvas setting so canvas setting now this this I wouldn't really advise you to edit because the default orientation is already nice. The default orientation of your Power, Power BI is 16 by 9, which is like how your PowerPoint orientation is. And most of the time when you are doing reports, you have to bear in mind who is going to consume the reports. But given a situation where you may need to edit the layout of your Power BI, like what you feel is, oh, the size is too small. You want to increase the size. Now I'm against you editing it, but if you will have to edit it, under this canvas setting, you can change this from 16 by 9 to custom. If you are doing a later or something, you can probably use this later setting. And you have your Power BI looking like this. Uh, or let's say 4 by 3, you have it looking like that. Or you can use a two tip. Okay, so two tip is also something else you can change your canvas setting to. I won't talk on it now because your other facilitator or in the training video you may use this two tip. So I'm going to just highlight that as well. Now I can set it to sixteen by nine. That's the default one, and the default is good. The default canvas setting is good, so you don't have to change that as well. You have your canvas setting. Now you have some other settings which you can tweak and change as well when you're working with your Power BI. You can change your page name from here. You can change your page type from here, from standard to tooltip to drill down. But all of these changes I'm making right now, I'm doing them from the format, format view. You have the data view, your um, build, your format button in your power bi in your power bi so i'm changing it from there now one other thing that we need to be aware of in our power bi is if you notice where i'm highlighting in my power bi you have this thing called layout the layout i have right now is called the desktop layout remember when i started i said power bi can exist in three from your be phone layout, the desktop layout, the, the phone, the desktop, and the service. Now, if you want to build a mobile type report, you can always switch to this mobile layout. What this mobile layout will mean is you can build out a report that it is, that has the look and feel of a phone type report so that the person that is going to be consuming it, if they are going to be consuming it on their phones, you can build a report for this mobile layout under this layout settings. So you have the desktop layout and this model layout at the bottom of my screen. So you have more desktop mobile layout. You can switch between them as you go. Please note your questions. I'll take questions towards the end. It's because of network. <laughs> I'm not taking it in between now. So please note all your questions. I'll take as many as you can towards the end. Now, so we have that. So these are your layouts in your Power BI. Now, one other thing I'm going to tell us to do, I'm going to tell us to do is under this our file tab, this our file tab, this is where we can do a lot of interesting things. We can save our Power BI the normal way we normally used to save our Excel, our Word document. We can save it under this file tab. We can do a save as we can share share this with somebody but you have to sign in so sharing it you have to sign into power bi service or we can go to this import export option so you can export the data as pdf here or as a power bi template 
a Power BI template is another type of Power BI file, PBI tree file. Uh, you, you may not need to export it as a template for now, but know the capabilities is there. You have the option to export it as a template. Now, underneath all these settings, under this file, you have this place for options and settings, options and settings. And if you click on options, the reason why I want us to probably do this, probably when you get the recording, if you've not been following along, go to the options bar. And under the option bar, you have something called preview features, preview features. There are a lot of things under these options that you can explore and you can change, but I advise you against changing most of them because these are the default settings and the default normally is good for most use case scenarios. You can come to these updates. I can check most of the settings are already good, except these preview features. Now, what is in these preview features? Remember, like I said, Power BI updates every. Power BI updates every month. Power BI updates every month. And some features are, how Power BI release their updates, they don't immediately, um, it immediately ensure their features affect everyone. No, they first test their features with a smaller group of people then they read before they now roll it out for larger consumption. Now, how can you see those features that are new and easily are ready to use? You can see those features in the preview features button. So the preview features button, Under these preview features, under your options, you have access to a lot of features which are like came into Power BI. Hello, can you hear me now? Sorry. Can you hear me? Yeah, can you hear me? Your line was breaking. Okay, so so I'll just go over it again. So under file, under your file. Uh, let me go. Under the file, you have options, options and settings. You can go to the options tab. Then you have the preview features. You have the preview features tab. Now, these preview features, what I would employ you to do is for most of these preview features. You, you can see on my end, all of them are turned on. On your end, not all may be turned on. Now, but the ones that we advise you to turn on, they are new and they are quite good. Turn on on objects, the interaction. Turn on quick measure suggestions. Turn on, turn on new card visual. Turn on button slicer visual. Turn on write DAX queries with copilot. Turn on this this bottom uh, visual. Like I said, I, I I may even employ you to turn on a lot of these features. But one thing is you you can let, click on learn more before you go ahead to turn it on, so you can see if it's a feature you will like or you will not like. And once you do that and click on OK, Power BI will ask you to close your Power BI and open it again. So once you do that, you should see your Power BI will be looking like a new entity, a new a new product. Uh, under the new products, you have more features and capabilities to use and to test out in Power BI. In Power BI. Now, before we go, before we go, and this is going to be uh, towards like the last thing I'm going to do. Now, I want us to. Because we have a bit of time, I want us to just play around with Power BI um, over the next days towards the next session. And the data I want us to use is when you open Power BI by default, you have this option to use sample data. Use sample data. Now, if I click on use sample data, I can load sample data. 
So Power BI already has it as a data that it has um, it has stored already. And once I click on this use sample data and load sample data, I can select this, select this button. Now you have two options. You have the load data, the transform data. Transform data will take you to Power Query. And what the person that is going to tell you, take you on Power Query, we normally advise you to do is as much as possible, don't always just go to load data because it's also good to check the quality of your data before you trans before you load your data. Now, because I know this data was prepared by Microsoft, and this data I'm supposing should be clean and good, I'm just going to click on load. I'm just going to click on load because I don't want to go into Power Query and somebody else is going to take Power Query session. So I'm just going to click on load. And the moment I click on load, the moment I click on load, I have that data brought in. It's a simple financial data. Simple financial data. Now, under this section, this section is where for those that use pivot table, you'll be familiar with this, with this as well. Uh, and that's why we ensure that you did power, you did Excel before we move to Power BI. Now, for you to create a visualization in Power BI, it's as simple as clicking on a button. So if I want to see a simple report of, uh, let's see, what in, a discount band and our sales, I'm just going to select discount band I'm going to select sales. And by clicking on these two things, I have a report generated for me. This is sum of sales by discount bar. Sum of sales by discount bar. Now, under this build section of my Power BI, you see this the Power BI visualization that is highlighted is the Power BI visualization that it is using, which is a cluster bar right now. If I want to change it, I can change this. Maybe I don't like a bar. Let me see this in a table. I can select a table and have the data showing in a table like this as my report. I want to show it in a metrics table. I have it showing like this on my report. So is as changing visualization is as easy as clicking on these buttons right here to change your visualization. Now. Where we do edit your visualization, you edit it under this format section. Under this format section, I can decide, you know what, I want a title for my report. I have the title here. Let me call it good, good report. I can I can have the title at the top of my report like this at the top of my table. So let me zoom in a bit. I can have the title on top of my table. If I say, you know what, I don't want the title, I can deselect it. If I uh, I don't like this table again, I want to show you a bar. I can change this to a cluster bar chart. And under the bar chart, I can come here, under this format section, the format section, this button to show like this on your end. I can scroll down. I want to see the data label. I can turn that one. And I have something like this. Maybe I want to remove my y axis. I don't want that to be showing that I can turn it off. No, maybe I can show that for my title. I don't want it to be showing. I can turn it off. My x axis, I don't want it to be showing. I can scroll off and I can turn it off. Now, with, with this, with this, which I have right here, you, you can see it's so easy to create. To create a report in Power BI. So once you've loaded your data into Power BI, you can go ahead to start creating your report, your visualization by clicking. You just click on the report you want to see. Let's see our sales uh, month name. You click on it and you have your report like this. I, you can change the visual by, if you have the on object option on, you can select this expand. I can select this line chart here and I, I can change my visual however I want and show my data 
however I want. Now, the point of this session is not to do a visualization class as well, it's to show us how to go about using Power BI as a tool. So once the other facilitators come in, you will get used to a lot of the things that they are saying when they are beginning. Now, so your table view, remember, this view allows you to see the data that you brought into your Power BI. Your model view, this view allows you to create relationships with your data. Your data, your DAX query view, this allows you to write some DAX measures and to view the output of those measures as well. Now, I'm not going to be going into that today, but that's some of the things that you can do as well. Now, the last thing I know, I'm always saying the last thing, but I want us to gain a lot of stuff. You can change the theme of your report by clicking on that button here, and you can change it to, let's say, I wanted to use this dark theme. I can change the theme of my report. I can change it to maybe a light theme, and I've changed the theme of my report. So with that being said, um, I hope you've been introduced to Power BI, what you can do, the Power BI community, where to go for help, um, how to build your first visualization, how to, how to view your data, how to stay updated with trends in Power BI as well. Now, with this few, with that's a few points of mine, um, I, I want to say thank you once again for attending this session. I'll be taking questions if they are any. So thank you. Over to you. Um, thank you very much, Joseph, for that brief introduction to Power BI. And um, <clears throat> from the chat, I don't think we have much question, but someone had asked a question about um, a laptop not loading Power BI. So I think someone is very attending to that question. I don't know if I can actually shed more light into it. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. So your laptop not loading Power BI. Uh, okay. Okay. So the, the reason why your laptop may not be loading Power BI, there, there, there could be a couple of reasons actually um so it could be probably due to your it could be due, due to your probably your system your system settings as well but you know what you can always drop me a message as well i can look at look into it with you and we can hopefully get it done um someone said i was too fast apologies about that it was it was intended to be to be slightly far because of the network issues. This network issues, I explained that earlier, you have access to the resources as well. You have access to the video um, as well, but I didn't want the network to show us off as well. Yeah, thank you. So any other questions? Um, and I think, yeah, it was one as well. Someone said, for someone to open Power BI, is it, some, is it compulsory to connect to network? No, 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 no. It's not compulsory to connect to network. Is Power BI open source? So, yeah. Okay, so um, Tyro, let's have a conversation. So what do you mean uh, is it open source? Can you elaborate a bit? What's your question? Just need to be sure on the same page. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. So okay. I said Power BI. So Power BI desktop, the desktop aspect of it is free to use by anyone. You can build out your visual. See, right now I'm not even signed in. <laughs> Throughout the session, I wasn't signed in. So so it. But so for the aspects which you will need to sign in is when you need to share the your visualization, when you need to do some advanced capabilities, you need to share the output the output of your report share your dashboard to a specific user set some automations on your report so your reports can be sent out uh, periodically without your influence that aspect of it requires power bi service and that is the aspect that you need a license to utilize as well i hope i've been able to answer your question 
I thank you, Joseph, for that. And someone actually said, I'm a life from, I don't have the format option on my Power BI. How can I get it? Okay, so the, so the format section, so I'm going to take you back a bit. So the format section, once you've enabled, so what I tried to ensure was when we started, I first asked, do we all have the view on our screen? And we all, uh, are, we all concurred, yes. But right now, when you are watching the video again, I will employ you, once you've gone to your options and settings, and you've probably turned on a lot of these preview features, your Power BI should look, should look almost identical to how my Power BI looks right now. So once you turn most of these preview features, your Power BI will look identical to it. But how you can have this format section showing is, under this view tab, under this view tab, at the top here, you have your home, insert modeling, and you have your view tab. Under this view tab, you have these buttons here. You have your data, your build, and you have your formats. Or you can click on it at the top. Once you click on it at the top, you have this format stuff showing on your end. Or if you click on the button here, you have it showing. From the uh, right, from thank, your you. End. Uh, thank you very much for that. And another question from Dolapo. Um, Dolapo says, um, can one make use of the Power BI extension Power BI extension on Microsoft 365? Because I am unable to install the application on my PC. Okay, so, so you should be able to install the application on your PC regardless of um 365, or less if if you are using a company laptop and they set restriction, there are some companies that I know they set restrictions that do not allow the employees download certain things on their device. That's when you probably may not be able to install it. But right now I'm using a personal um, laptop. On your personal laptop, if you go to Microsoft Store on the, your personal Windows PC, you should see Power BI Desktop and it should allow you to install it the only other thing we may need to check is if yeah so if you have any other restriction and issues with it okay thank you very much for that clarification and uh, this question is that um please how did you get the sample data on power bi i guess that should be on the once you opened up your power bi that should be something you see first in your screen that by default if i'm not taking right joseph yes exactly so by default once you open any power bi file in the any power bi file in the world you should see that sample data that sample data is offered by microsoft so i'm opening a new one right now so we see it's offered by microsoft and how you just need to use it is you can click on use Sample data in this. Okay. Just maybe taking a bit of time, but you can, yeah, just taking a bit of time. But you can click on use sample data and like use sample data. Then you can use, you can use the default data into your Power BI as well. So somebody asked a question quickly. Let me see. Um, I hope I answered your question. One moment. Thank you very much for the session. Um, is data analytics? Okay. Okay. Sorry. Can you hear me? Okay. Let's say thank you for the introductory class, Mr. Fadego. Is a data analytics expert supposed to have mastery of all these software programs, Excel, Power BI, etc. Or do they usually have expertise in one two of them? Okay, okay, so thank you for that question. So usually, in the usual case, you, the truth is you cannot really even state to be a, a master of all. Now, there, there will be some tools in particular that you are more skilled than in others. Like me, for example, I'm probably more skilled in Power BI and Excel that uh, other tools I I know, but I but as a data analyst. So to answer your question, 
you do not essentially have to be a master of all. You don't have to be a jack of trade, master of all. Now, you may actually be faced in a situation where you may need to use different tools. And especially in this part of the country, this part of the country where I'm sure maybe you've been applying for jobs, you see, oh, they are asking for Python, SQL, Power BI, uh, Excel. Now, when you actually probably even get the job, you may actually only be using Excel using Excel. So the what we, we've tried to do in Analytics Copper Workshop is we're trying to build your foundation in these three tools because knowing this any these three tools, it will allow you marketable marketable in probably any other part of the world, essentially. Knowing these three tools well and picking your niche will allow you to get a job. You can you can get a job essentially with even only Power BI skills. I know people that they only know Power BI. I know people that are very, very good at only Tableau. I know people that are very, very good at SQL alone and they get a position. So you don't actually have to be an expert of all, but it's good to actually know a thing or two about different tools and, technolo and technologies. I hope I answered your question. Right, thank, you. thank you very much for that, um, Joseph. And there is one pair to that question. Um, he said, the person says, are all inbuilt function on Excel also on Power BI? Okay, uh, thank you for that question. So, so the, so in that, in regards to that, so in Power BI, you wouldn't be using, you wouldn't be using um, functions. What you'll be doing in Power BI is you'll be using something called expression. Now you, I don't know if in the project, but I believe in the project, you probably created measures in measures in Excel using Power Pivot. You created some measures. I saw some people discussing about that. What those measures are is their data analysis expression. And this is the programming language which you will likely be using in Power, in Power BI. Functions, a lot of them, a lot of expressions work the same way functions works in Excel. Now, but in Power BI, you will be introduced to a lot, to a different load of expressions, but no need to worry, there are a lot of guides. In that community place, you see a lot of guides. There's even a website which I will show us, um, which I don't know who is going to take the dark class, but if you go to this darkguide.com, it includes all the expressions that you'll probably need to know by working with Power BI. You, you may not need to know all of them, but one thing I always employ people for, even Excel, it's good to have like a place you can quickly reference if you need to probably check it in or to, oh, may, what expression would I need to calculate this? What function would I need to calculate that or that? You don't need to be, we've passed that age where you need to be cramming things in your mind. And the beauty of it is there's also co-pilot. Copilot is embedded in Power BI. What Copilot, what I mean by Copilot is AI features and capabilities. So AI is embedded. You have a lot of AI features in Power BI. Your AI can help you with writing some of your DAX. And you can also ask normal, your normal AI tools, and they can also help you to write your solve your problem as well. But when you get to the DAX class, I'm sure a lot of these things will be a lot clearer for you as well. I hope I've answered your question. All right, thank you very much. I guess that's all the questions we have in this section. Oh, though, I still one more question. Um, Moses said, can I interact in the community and get messages, information real time without a data connection? Without a? Data connection. Without, okay, no, Maybe you said, Check and make okay, so in the community, the community works online. So the Microsoft Fabric community works online. You can you, you have to actually be online to interact in that community. You can post questions when you are stuck on a situation. You see most of the time the people that even reply in those communities, most of the time you can see MVPs reply to your question. You can see other people, regular people as well, reply. It's not like MVPs to our regular people that became 
MVP. So by interacting in those communities, you can easily you can easily gain some of this recognition and awards as well by Microsoft. Please, what's the difference between Power BI and Power BI Copilot? So, uh, okay, I, I think I was the one that set set myself up with this question. So Power BI, Power BI is the tool. Now Copilot is an additional benefit in Power BI. I Power BI to clarify it. So Copilot, you have Copilot capabilities inside Power BI. Copilot means is Microsoft way of saying an AI assistant, co-pilot. So if you are using a Windows 11 PC, I'm sure on your device, you have something called co-pilot in Windows preview. I'm, I think it's also available for Windows 10. What this does is if you click on it on your device, your normal Windows device, it allows you to ask your, your Windows, your stuff or questions, and it can act, answer your questions based on that. So Microsoft calls it your copilot. Now you have copilot embedded in a lot of tools. There's even copilot in Excel, in Word, and some other technologies like that. And you have copilot in Microsoft Power BI, essentially. That's the distinction between the two. Okay, thank you very much. Just uh, appreciate your time and the effort in explaining the simple questions that we asked and for putting those three questions to Power BI. We appreciate that. Can we please appreciate our facilitator for today? I guess with no more questions, I think we should be running up this section and we'll see you next week by 2 p.m. or so, all day and 4 p.m. on Sunday, respectively. And one more thing, we always try to like practice whatever we learn in this in this workshop because without this, there's no way you can actually move further. Because as it says, as it says, it's practice make perfect. So the more we practice, the better we get. And thank you so thank you so much once again to our facilitator. We appreciate you and we are grateful for your time. So we'll see okay. you next week. Uh -huh. So, so just want to thank you everyone once again. Thank you for joining. So apology, apology once again for the slight speed increase I had to do because of, you know, the current situation with our country. Network could have kicked me out any any time as That's well. It. But I'm glad the network allowed us to complete the class. So you have the recording. Please go to the recordings and if you have questions if you have questions based on what we've done right now um open my linkedin is open i don't know if you know my whatsapp number on the group but you can connect with me on linkedin you can probably send a message i'll try as much as possible <laughs> somebody said we watch in 1.75 speed okay that's good so uh, i'll try as much as possible to re to reply to respond as well um so thank you everyone i hope um just uh, see us just, i don't know can you, you can you drop um can you help us drop okay up your linkedin um profile because someone just asked for that and likely twitter account as well okay so i'm joseph father on linkedin and twitter um so i i don't know if i'm the top is i think maybe i don't know i don't know if i'm the top result on Twitter, but I think I'm top it out on LinkedIn. So, so maybe if it's checked yourself further, I will share the link on WhatsApp just to be sure. But right. thank you. Once again. All right. Hey, thank you so much, bro. Um, everybody should have a great day, and we we'll see you next week. Bye.